Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to continue our series on inflammatory bowel disease. It's been a long journey so far and we have reached the fourth pillar of our diagnostic journey. Just to recap, we are in phase one that is detection and diagnosis of disease. This is the natural history of disease of inflammatory bowel disease. If you have missed out on the previous videos, please go through them because it's more of a sequential discussion that we are having. We have seen this slide many times. We have discussed the clinical features, the laboratory findings, imaging findings, as well as the endoscopy and the differentials at each of these phase. Today, we are going to discuss the basics of pathology and then in the next part, we will discuss the differentials in pathology. So when we come to biopsy or pathology, the role is in diagnosis. It's also in giving the differential diagnosis. Then there is a point where biopsies are used for assessment of response as well as for prognostication of IBD. However, in this discussion, we are limiting ourselves to its role in diagnosis and differentials. When we talk of key findings, when we are seeing these slides or biopsies, some important differentiations that we need to understand are ulcerative colitis versus Crohn's disease. Then understand the terms reparative change versus dysplasia, DALM versus adenoma, and ulcerative colitis with Crohn's-like features. This is important to understand because there are therapeutic dilemmas. If you mislabel ulcerative colitis as Crohn's or vice versa, the therapies are different. So these are very important distinctions to understand. So when we talk of ulcerative colitis versus Crohn's disease, we have already seen the macroscopic picture of both of them, but just to understand ulcerative colitis is continuous and diffuse. It involves the rectum in almost all cases. 15% cases have backwash ileitis and perianal disease is rare in ulcerative colitis. Usually ulcerative colitis is continuous superficial disease, whereas Crohn's disease is segmental and transmural involvement. Fat wrapping, fistulas and sinuses are not common in ulcerative colitis, but they are common in Crohn's disease. Coming to microscopic picture between ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, discrete or skip ulcers are common in Crohn's disease. Mucosal edema is common in Crohn's disease. Fissures and granulomas are also common in Crohn's disease. When we come to mucosal inflammation and architectural involvement in ulcerative colitis, it is diffuse and mucosal regeneration, crypt atrophy and abnormal crypt architecture is frequent in ulcerative colitis. Penetral metaplasia can be present in ulcerative colitis, whereas pyloric gland metaplasia is common in Crohn's enteritis. Remember this commonly asked multiple choice questions. Cytoplasmic mucin is diminished in ulcerative colitis and rhymphoid aggregates are rare. Okay, So these are some of the microscopic distinguishing features between ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Now coming to the difference between reparative change and dysplasia, we have to understand that dysplasia will be an important precursor to malignancy, whereas reparative change is not. Okay. Will there be high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio in dysplasia? Yes. Loss of nuclear polarity? Yes. Especially in high-grade dysplasia. And cribriform change in the glands is common in high-grade dysplasia. Nuclear pleomorphism and nuclear changes such as hyperchromasia, irregularity, stratification and crowding is more common in mild to severe dysplasia, whereas it is absent or very mild in reparative change. This is important to understand because the management will change in both of them in terms of surveillance as well as treatment for malignancy. Now, coming to differentiation between DALM and adenoma, understand that if the lesion is in an area unaffected by ulcerative colitis, then an adenoma is favored. Okay? 
this is a very important point because many times you can have lesions which are away from an uh, area which has ulcerative colitis and then it is an adenoma. Dysplasia associated lesion or mass or DALM is more common in age less than 40 years and they may not have a polyp. The stalk in the base region and when you take a biopsy of this area, dysplasia will be seen because it's a dysplasia associated lesion or mass, DALM, whereas in adenoma, this area will be negative for dysplasia. Now, this distinction is important to remember because DALM has a higher risk for malignancy even when the dysplasia is low grade. Okay, It is dysplasia associated lesion or mass, DALM. Higher risk for malignancy even when the dysplasia is low grade and therefore DALM becomes an indication for surgery whereas adenoma by itself does not become an indication for surgery. So we have seen two important distinctions. One is to differentiate between ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. The second is to differentiate between DALM that is dysplasia associated lesion or mass versus adenoma. And these are its important points. Now coming to ulcerative colitis with Crohn's-like features. These are rare. We have marked the incidence of these features. Backwards ileitis, we have already discussed that it is due to an incompetent ileocecal valve. And the inflammation is less in backwards ileitis and not transmural, which differentiate it from Crohn's disease. Okay. Backwards ileitis is present in 15% of cases with pancolitis. This is important to remember. And stricture thickening deep fissures are absent in backwards ileitis. As compared to Crohn's disease where the inflammation is transmural and therefore these things are commonly present. Upper GI involvement is very rare in ulcerative colitis. But if it is present, remember that there will be no granulomas when upper GI involvement is due to ulcerative colitis. However, here upper GI inflammation can be diffused and it can result in fistulas or superficial plasma cytosis. This is different from ulcerative colitis of the colon. After sulcer is seen in 17% of cases of ulcerative colitis. After sulcer is usually located over a lymphoid follicle. We have already seen classical after sulcer and the differential diagnoses are infective colitis, diverticulitis and diversion colitis. So these are some of the points of ulcerative colitis where they have Crohn's like features and this is important to remember. Transmural inflammation is very rare in ulcerative colitis, but if it is there, it is mononuclear and the fissuring ulcers can go deep up to submucosa and muscularis propria. This transmural inflammation is also seen in toxic megacolon where you will have myocyte necrosis and serosal inflammation. Fifth and very uncommon feature of ulcerative colitis is the presence of granulomas. Granulomas are more common in Crohn's disease and intestinal tuberculosis, other granulomatous diseases. But in ulcerative colitis, if you have granulomas, understand that it's a UC with Crohn's-like feature and not CD itself. Two types of granulomas can be seen. One is crypt-related, where due to damage in the crypt, there is extravasation of mucin. And this mucin gets a histiocytic collection in the mucosa. So this is within the mucosa you find these granulomas due to damage to the crypts. Second type is deep-seated foreign body granulomas which are commonly seen in fulminant colitis due to any cause. And both these granulomas need to be differentiated from epithelial granulomas that are seen in Crohn's disease. Okay, so, so understand these three different types of granulomas. One is crypt related due to mucosal extravasation of mucin. Second is foreign body granuloma and the third is epithelial granulomas of Crohn's disease. So we have seen the role of pathology in terms of these key findings that is ulcerative colitis versus Crohn's disease, microscopic as well as microscopic features. Understand the difference between reparative change and dysplasia. The key points to differentiate dysplasia associated lesion or mass ALM from adenoma. 
and the five different presentations of ulcerative colitis with Crohn's like features. In the next part of this video, we will study the pathologic features of the differential diagnosis that we have seen so far. And that will help us in understanding how biopsy can sometimes play an important role in labeling the diagnosis of inflammatory bowel disease. Thank you.